Bluff City NIL is an official partner of Coaching for Literacy, a nonprofit organization using the power of sports to impact childhood literacy. You can read more about them at coachingforliteracy.org or follow them on social media at Coaching for Literacy. Your donations to Bluff City NIL are 100% taxable, tax deductible because of our partnership together. So we thank you guys for supporting Memphis Tiger student athletes and helping promote the monumental cause of childhood literacy. <laughs> Welcome to Tigers Untapped, a Bluff City Media podcast. Stepping up to the microphones are your hosts, Trey Lasley and TJ Willis. Pull up your chair, grab your favorite brew, and enjoy the conversation. Now, let's get to the show. TJ Stonewall Jackson over there, where you got a brick wall behind you. Yeah, man. It looks cool. I don't that actually makes me think of Butch Jones brick by brick, and I it's not a good. It's not a good look for you. No, nah, I'm going with the um, like the rustic vibe, right? Like I that. get it. Is that because our uh, transfer portal recruitment is at a stone wall? We've run into a brick wall. Mm, no commitments or I, nothing. I'm not sure I'm following that one, but yes. Whatever. I'll say yes. It's at a halt. Tell the people what we're sipping on this eve. This fine <clears throat> spring eve. May 1. We, Happy May Day. Happy birthday, Ryan Kelly, our buddy. It's his birthday today. This is uh, Wiseacre. Irusu. 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 Yeah. It's a rice so, log. Shout out, to, shout out to them for putting a uh, pronunciation, pronunciation on the can. Because that would... I mean, I've, I've said Irusu, but appreciate them putting that on there. Also, yeah, teach, man. hey... 99 calories. I saw smart, that. Smart snacking by us. <laughs> Under three bills. You know, this is like a a fancy Mick Ultra. I think is what we're looking at here. Is it? I don't know. I don't know. A rice lager. Yeah, this would be a lighter. Uh, it's a good brew, though. Definitely much away. lighter than we've been uh, rolling with on the pod, for sure. Mm. All right. Recruiting is at a standstill. We've had no commitments, uh, nothing, man. We had uh, Jalen Young from UCF visit last week. Hadn't even gotten a commitment from him. Uh, all signs indicating we probably would. Maybe we'd get one. By the time this episode's come out, but uh, been on a little bit of a halt there, and I don't. It's been silent, almost too silent. Teej, are you worried at all? I mean, we yeah. hadn't even gotten a a feel on the Mikey and JJ situation yet. Still, I mean, what are we waiting on? Yeah, and I I think those two things maybe play hand in hand. Like I know we have some scholarships to kind of work with, but um. You don't know how many scholarships you have. So so perhaps the Mikey JJ thing kind of plays in hand. Maybe there are a couple of guys that Penny is uh maybe looking to reach out to. Maybe he's been texting already and the news just hasn't broken yet. And he's like, Hey, we got to keep this under wraps because I'm not sure if I'm gonna have these spots open. Maybe it's a situation like that. You know, it, it's kind of hard to say. Um, we did get some news in, in the recruiting uh front of things, Russell uh Chiwe is going to go to Georgia. So that's one guy uh, whom we've well, reached out to that is not a, coming a, here. A potential starting center that uh, is no longer on the list. But speaking of potential starting centers, Arkansas Dirk is in the portal, TJ. We dabbled in the Connor Vanover department a couple of mm -hmm. years ago. You said this in the Discord. I don't frankly know how he still has any eligibility left, but would you dabble in the van over again? Old Arkansas Dirk? I don't think so. I dude's played it. He's got to be a grand transfer now, right? Because he's definitely been on. Oh, sure. Yeah. He was at Arkansas. Arkansas. He's been at Oral Roberts. Oral I think Roberts. Last, just last season, he played at Oral Roberts. 
Um, he, this is so, his fourth team, I think. Whoever, wherever he lands now, which is impressive. Yeah. yeah. So he played. He played as a fresh. I don't know how this is going to work. I guess because he's a grad transfer. Played as a fresh as a freshman at Cal. Transferred to there Arkansas. Is. Played two years in Arkansas. Transferred after last season. Played this year. Started all thirty-four games. Averaging twenty-six minutes a night for Oral Roberts. My guy mm-hmm. shot fifty-two percent from the field. Thirty-two percent, almost thirty-two and a half percent from three on four attempts a game and 81% from the charity stripe. TJ, I'm going to, I would maybe dabble in Savannah over how many blocks he, no. he averaged two blocks a night. No, sorry. No, that's his career. TJ, he averaged 3.2 blocks a night last year. You're saying I, that's a hard no from you. No. Okay. You need a starting center. Out. My guy, he's definitely not going to be, a starting center, I don't think. Not in Memphis. Why? Who else is? I, I think you're. There's a better chance you get Chandler at center than you get Arkansas Dirk as your starting center. Oh come on! This is unfair for Dirk at this point. We should Why? stop calling him Arkansas Dirk. Because he's not hey, Dirk. Shoot nearly thirty three percent from three, over mm-hmm. eighty from the free throw line, on his career. Mm-hmm. That's only because he he only attempts two free throws a, a night, but uh, I mean, he averaged 13, uh, 13, seven, and three blocks a night. I'm trying to think. I'm just saying, at this point in time, I would call. I dabble, I'd dabble in it. But if if my options were bring back Musa or or bring Connor Vanover, I'm taking Musa. I know a lot of people probably won't agree with that, but well, sure. But you got to also think about the eligibility in that. Vanover's your grad transfer; he's going to be able to Maybe. play. Have we confirmed that? Oh, I mean, come I on! Surely he's. I mean, there's no way he's entering the portal after already having transferred twice if he wasn't graduating. I, but I guess he sat out the last one, so I don't know. I guess maybe. Yeah, I think he sat out from Arkansas. I mean, from Cal to Arkansas. Yeah, he's a grad yeah, transfer. He did. Um, so there's eligibility concerns with Musa, right? He's not a grad transfer. He's already transferred with his free transfer. He's going to need a waiver. Mm. In Vanover's situation, I, I could be wrong, but I wouldn't anticipate him needing a a waiver, no. given the fact that he would be a grad. He's a grad transfer, yeah, so he should be fine. I mean, I'd call him. Text him, email him. Okay, put so put some you, feel, put some feelers out there. When you say call him, you don't mean like actually offer the guy. Just see if there's interest there, right? I'm just seeing if there's interest. Okay, I'm okay. not. Okay. You, I, you can talk me into that. One. At this point in time, we ain't got nobody down low. And I'll tell you this: we're big fans of the sausage maker here from Bartorvik. TJ, we we're we're sitting at forty eighth. Okay. Ranking wise, right now. Yeah, at Arkansas Dirk, you want to take a, a gander at what we jump to? You want my opinion or my educated guess? You can give me both. All right. My opinion is we stay at 48. Okay. Um, Not sure how that I'm gonna, would work. I'm going to assume because you don't think much. he would make us any better than we currently are. Get out of here. Uh, okay. 40, 41. Woo! My guess. 29 TJ Shut off. top no, 30 so, would just sausage Arkansas. maker is a fan of, no. of Connor Vanover. He, yes. The sausage maker as am I TJ, you give me 13, eight and three blocks a night in 26 minutes. I'm a fan too. That's, it. That's what you're Walker's looking for though. though. You want that rim protector on the defensive side. Right. And if he knocks down a three, a game as a cherry on top, Oral Roberts, can he do I'm that? I'm not saying stick the American. I'm not saying run your whole offense through him. I'm saying give me three blocks, eight boards a night. Everything else is gravy. I don't even know. You a white? You a white office. or brown gravy guy? I don't really like gravy, honestly. Wow, no, that's weird. That is. I, I mean, that feels illegal in the South. I know I'm not a gravy guy. 
on nothing, not on mashed potatoes. You had no biscuits no. and gravy, nothing. TJ, I fi- I mean, oh, I'm not gonna scrape it off if it's on there, but I'm not actively gonna put it on anything. I mean, yeah, if you were scraping off, then we had serious problems. I'm I'm gonna assume. I mean, it's I it's better, I guess, that you gravy. will eat it. I think I've. But if you're scraping off or sending back because it had gravy on it, we have real problems. I'm trying to think what the hell you eat brown gravy on. I can only think of like Salisbury steak and I'm out. So I'm, I'm going to say white. Gravy. Uh, my mom makes brown gravy for uh, like mashed potatoes. I throw it on my, my dress, my stuffing, whatever dressing at Thanksgiving too. Brown gravy's good. She throws a little bit of cut up uh, boiled egg in there. It's great. I do like a good thick white gravy though. On a chicken fried steak. You kidding me? TJ, we're gonna get you on some gravy. You look like a gravy. You look like a gravy guy. I do look like a gravy guy. I'll give you that. I, I so definitely I mean that is, physically look like a gravy guy. That you do. I uh it's just not my thing, man. Oh man, that's surprising. I don't I've lost track of where we were at, what we were talking about, because your denial of gravy is just caught me off guard arkansas dirk being the uh I guess Look, a give, him a, give him a call you need you need a big dude even if that to your point if chandler plays more whatever but i think connor vanover helps your ball club so let me ask you this i have picked up from you that center is definitely the biggest need right is that kind of am i picking up what you're throwing down there Yes. I mean, I would, I could argue that you need a, another guard, but I think given okay. Caleb Mills and whatever happens with Mikey, I mean, you're, you've got enough. I guess what does enough mean? I think Caleb could be a one and two. You're fine. Okay. You don't have a real five right now. And that's pending Malcolm. And I'm just going to be straight up honest. I don't think Malcolm is the starting center. I thought you were going to say you're being honest. Malcolm's probably not coming back because he was selling all of his jerseys on social media. I'm not. I, I don't even like know the, what. I don't even know how to read those tea leaves anymore. Like this, I'd have told you Malcolm cleaning, wasn't dude. coming back after last year. I've taken so, a bag of clothes to Goodwill this spring already. I'm spring cleaning too. And who knows? He maybe just want a little bit of cash flow. All right, so I think he's, I, I think he's got can four years of question. jerseys already. Center number you, one, guard number two. That was going to be my next question. Guard you, you ran with it. Uh, center one, one A, one B, one B guard, and not shooting or point. Uh, does it matter? I, I would prefer. More, more. I mean, what does it even mean? More of a point guard with Caleb at the two, just being more of that scoring off ball option. I mean, you can put the ball in his hands, but Caleb more is a, a two scoring option. And when I say one, like that may sound bad, but I mean, even if Young commits as a point guard, like that's not. I don't think that that's really solving the open spot that's the vacancy and the need right there i mean in a backup role yes but i still think you need a dude that can go out there and play 30 minutes a night at the one yeah so i looked up young stats and obviously he hasn't started many games but when you look at when he starts i mean he's been fine i mean, I mean it's he not was like... serviceable against us and his you know and the starts that he had but like and maybe Maybe he takes a giant leap. How do you know? I mean, he obviously sees something yeah. in him he likes, right? So, like, maybe he does come. He's had experience for what? He's he'll be a red shirt junior. Is that right? So, three years of experience in uh, the American. He's not tiny. He's not. You know, we've had some small guards here. He's a six two one eighty. So. Um, I mean, he's not a massive big guard, but he's also not sub six foot. So, yeah. And well, who, I, mean, I mean, defensively, what does he bring? You know, maybe that's, that's more of 
what you're looking at is just kind of a true facilitator bulk, you know, take care of the ball, get it to playmakers and then play tough defense. So, yeah. um, I mean, I'll I know be you're, honest, you're, it looks you're like not can get another KD. Yeah. I mean, and I think that's what I'm like caught up in. You're probably not getting another Kendrick. And I don't think you need another Kendrick. But I mean, like a Jaden, Bra Jalen Bradley would have been great. I'd have felt real good about that. And I get maybe it's still an option. It could still be out there. Hadn't heard one way or the other. But I think the more the time ticks and we don't hear anything, the worse it is. I would agree with you on that one. It's not looking good. It went from looking real, real good to not good. Yeah, and that, that changed very, very fast. Uh, but, hey, we've mentioned it before. We still got 10 days left in the portal as of tonight. Mm -hmm. So there could be somebody else out there that, that throws their name in. Or, hey, maybe uh, Ray J. Dennis doesn't get the feedback he wants. You bring him in. I don't know. We'll see. Mm. Unfortunately, on that one, I don't think it's happening, my man. Yeah, that one's that one's probably not happening. Um, other big news: while the recruiting on the player side has been a little bit quiet, Penny did land a big commit on the coaching staff. We had a third, uh, well, one of the three assistant spots is open after Frank left for. Uh, Greener Pastures in Austin, Texas. Our guy from Western Kentucky, Mississippi State, Rick Stansberry, joining the staff. Did not see that coming at all. Initial thoughts on that. I mean, that's a, an incredible hire. I mean, we're, we're talking about a very experienced coach, a guy who's won 400-plus games that – 60 percent ish yeah, he's, numbers he's nearly a hey, he's almost 450 and like 250 wow. he's 442 and 255 so it's 63 percent okay Just about to try um, the math spent six years at mississippi state as a head coach took them to six ncaa tournaments uh spent the last what seven at uh western kentucky Played in two NITs there. Did win the Conference USA regular season title uh, two years ago, three years ago, mm -hmm. I think. Um, but didn't make the NCAA tournament with, with the uh, Hilltoppers of old Western Kentucky. Um, but, I mean, yeah, I think it's an incredible hire. He's been on staff at, at a and uh, Obviously, he was an assistant at State before he was the head coach at State. Um He's won two SEC tournaments, a regular season SEC title, was the SEC Coach of the Year in 2004. But, I mean, that's just – Penny's ability to get not only players, but co to your point, like coaches, I think it's a great hire. I mean, Stansbury's been able to get players. Not that Penny really, I think, needs help in that department. Mm -hmm. But Rick is somebody that he'd kind of been going up in a couple of battles – Recruitment wise, when you think about ACOD and then Sharp that had hit the portal last year, but Rick got him to stay. Um, which, you know, rumors of this started swirling. And I th shout out to to Leon Taylor. I think he had it first. You know, people started thinking, hey, if Rick's coming, maybe you get a Sharp to commit. But right before it was officially announced, Sharp committed to Ole Miss, Chris mm -hmm. Beard down there in Oxford. So we'll see if that's something that. You know, if he stays true to that commitment, or if, if Penny and old Rick are able to get him to come sixty miles north to uh, to the Big M, and then hey, you look at you, you hear me out here. You throw Sharp and Vanover in that front court. Eesh. The Twin Towers back there. You talk about two boys over seven foot. Uh, I don't mean you may not give up double digit points <laughs> at all. I'm Ever? talking like, yeah. Who's scoring on those dudes? I mean, not me. <laughs> That's like watching people try to play the ribs at the Grizzlies game. <laughs> I mean, you're just not scoring. That's probably true. That would be pretty wild. I don't know if you could afford to do that. I mean, it would just be like a pick and roll nightmare, but uh, yeah. 
No, but to your point, love the hire. Love having another former ex head coach. Won a lot of ball games. Coached a lot of a lot of good ball players. And like we said, gets he's been able to get guys even at places like Western Kentucky and State, which aren't. I mean, they're good basketball programs, but they're not like any of the top teams you think of when you think of college basketball by any means. So, yeah, I mean, you talk about Rick, you talk about Frank Haith, you talk about Larry Brown, you talk about Sam Mitchell. I mean, Benny's building staff. So does it worry you at all that we're talking about how Stansberry, you know, is able to grab these talented players, but he hasn't won anything? Does that kind of concern you at all? No, because he's not uh, he's not the old HC, Teej. Now all he's got to do is get boys here, and then Penny coaches them up. Is that it, though? You, you think that's just the, uh, where the buck stops? Look, I, I don't – I mean, he did well in the SEC. He won a Conference USA regular season title. He's obviously – we already talked about it. He's 450 victories, 250 losses. Like, he can coach some ball. And, again, he's not the head honcho, so – I think he'll have some ideas that, you know, Penny will either implement or he won't implement, and we'll go from there. But I'm not terribly worried about his uh, inability to make a deep run in the NCAA tournament and then join our staff as an assistant by any means. I got trust in what Penny's doing. No, I, mean, I think he knows what he's building. Like Two years ago, I went ahead and made that decision just to stop doubting the guy because he always finds. I want to say that happen. was that was maybe like ten months ago. No, it wasn't. I'm on the record, dude. You can find tweets. All right, you dork. We'll have to double check. We will have to double check that. Um, teach. I don't know if you notice. You don't. And those of you watching at home. Don't adjust your uh, television monitors no. or sets because the color on this is correct. It is purple. This is a purple Memphis basketball shirt. And I don't know if you know the story behind it, but I want to say it was 2010-ish. We were supposed to be wearing these FedEx Appreciation Unis that were purple and orange, two-tone. The front was orange and the back was purple or something. They were going to give these out to the crowd. It's got FedEx Appreciation Day on the back. And then it got vetoed real hard last minute. I think some boosters got mad about us wearing purple and orange or not our school colors, blah, blah, blah. But that's where this T-shirt originates from. So if, if you guys are at home or like thinking this was just like a overly washed, formerly blue Memphis shirt, it's not. This is a true purple. I don't know, man. Just fun facts behind that. I think you watched. You don't it believe like 50 that times. story? No. Well, that's where the FedEx Appreciation Day on the back sells it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wrapping up basketball news, and then we'll jump into some football stuff. KD worked out for the hometown Rockets. Posted on Instagram. So shout out to. Uh, Shout out to Kendrick. Hopefully he gets an opportunity. Um, I think he can he make definitely G League, right? Maybe get a two way with somebody. He could make an NBA roster. I don't. Chris Chioza is on roster, so like I don't. If you ask me, who's better between Chioza and KD? I'm going to pick KD. I mean, yeah, that's true. The thing with, I mean, KD's a bucket right and if you're a bucket you always got a shot like somebody's gonna take a chance on you sure the thing that i think could be a deciding fact is like his longevity his health i mean we saw it this year i don't you could probably count it'd be easier to count games or fewer games to count where he didn't go down at some point in the game with a rolled ankle or something. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, what's his durability like? Could he really hold up for that amount of basketball in a year? I think that's kind of his only, I mean, obviously size, you know, people are going to call out him being a smaller guy, but I think he makes up for it 
and how he plays and his ability to score the basketball. So, uh, again, worked out for the Rockets today, and I think he's got a workout scheduled with the Mavs later this week. So, shout out to Katie. Yes. Hopefully, he's able to uh, make something out of that. Yeah, I mean, I'm, tons of opportunity out there, especially with to your point with the G League. You can even perhaps make an NBA roster. I, I think he's got a shot personally. We'll see. I did too. Would love to see him make it. Um, all right, teach football. Are you sure we had some? Is there more basketball? Oh, you're right. We did. We talked about this. So, with sort of the uh, lull in basketball news, before we started, I asked TJ a question. This was Penny's fifth year. He's been here five years. So, what we're going to do real quick. TJ, if you picked one guy from each year of a roster for a starting five, who would your starting five be? Penny Penny coached teams the last five years. One guy from each year. I thought about it for a second. I've got mine in mind. You want to go first? Because I've kind of already... Um, Let's just start... No, we'll both go. We'll go year by year. Okay. So we'll start. Uh, let's start with the first year, 20, uh, 2018 year. I'll read. Let me read you the roster really quickly. Give me a half of a second. So for Penny's first year, 2018, 2019, mm-hmm. we got. <laughs> I mean, if you if this isn't your first pick, this will be absolutely shocking. Uh, Kevon Davenport, Tyler Harris, Alex Lomax, Jeremiah Martin, Rainier Thornton, Kareem Bruton, Mike Mike Parks Jr., Antoine Jones, Victor Eno, Isaiah Maurice, Lance Thomas, Kareem Azab, Jaden Hart. Jaden was on that first team. Holy cow. Yeah, and he's coming back. This is about to be a six year. Evan Olds, Ryan Boyce, David Winget. Who are you taking from that roster? I'm going to bring in Isaiah Maurice, David Winget, Victor Eno. You can only take one guy. I'm kidding, man. I'm not taking any of those nerds. Uh, Jeremiah Martin. I, I think he could be a serviceable, I'm going to say two guard for me here. I am. Shocked that you did not take on that important that. given previous discussions. But yes, I too, and I think anybody would have taken Jeremiah Martin. That is probably the only correct answer. Sure. All right. So we moved to 1920. So there you got a freshman DJ Jeffries, mm-hmm. sophomore Tyler Harris, sophomore Alex Lomax, red shirt sophomore <laughs> Isaiah Stokes. Freshman Boogie Ellis, freshman Damian Ball, freshman Lester Quinones, freshman or senior Isaiah Maurice, redshirt sophomore Lance Thomas, freshman Malcolm Dandridge, redshirt freshman Jaden Hardaway, and freshman Precious Achua. I'm going first, Precious. Okay. And he's my four. I'm taking Lester at the three. A freshman Lester? Wow. I okay. mean, okay, I didn't know that. Part no, 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 no. It's from that year you picked Lester. Oh, okay, Lester. then no, no, no. I picked, I picked no one. What? I would wow. take no one from that. Not even a freshman of the year, Precious Achua. No. Interesting. You know my thoughts on Precious. Yeah, that's very controversial. You're badgering. Okay. I can't, I mean, by the rules, I was thinking you had to take a player only one from each year, but I'll let you go since you don't, you absolutely hated this team. We'll go from there. So I'm sitting at Jeremiah Martin and precious Achua. Similar. I would have, I think Jeremiah at the two and precious. I would have at the four. So we'll move to 2021. You got a sophomore DJ Jeffries, a red shirt, sophomore Jaden Hardaway, junior a low, Redshirt sophomore Landers, sophomore Boogie, sophomore Damian Ball, sophomore Lester Quinones, junior DeAndre Williams, freshman, <laughs> does he count Jordan as, but sophomore Malcolm Dandridge, 
Connor Glennon and freshman Musa Cisse. Not a soul. You're not playing this game right, but fine. You, that was not clear. I said you had to take one from each year. That's fine. You hated this team. I'm going to take, because I'm playing the game correctly, I'm going to take Lester from this team, a sophomore Lester as my three. Okay. So I'm sitting at Jeremiah, Lester, and Precious. I've got a point guard and a center left. So we will move to 21-22 roster. That gives you uh, Earl Timberlake, Amani Bates, Jalen Duran, Landers as a Richard Jr., Junior Chandler Lawson, Freshman Jonathan Lawson, Senior Alo, Junior Lester, Senior DeAndre, Senior Tyler Harris, Freshman John Camden, Freshman Josh Mana, Minot, Junior Malcolm Dandridge, Red Shirt Junior Jaden Hardaway, Freshman Sam Anu. Hmm. I'm going to take Jalen as a... Uh, Any more picks, TJ? Yes. I'll also take... Uh, what year? 21-22. Last year's ball club. Not last year's ball club, technically. Okay. Uh, yes, I'll take Lester and Jalen. Okay, so that puts you at what? Jeremiah? Jeremiah, junior- Lester... Blank. A junior Lester. I'm you're taking Lester from last year as well. And then you can have Jalen. Just to play the rules. Uh I too would have taken Jalen. Can you imagine Precious and Jalen as the four and five on a on a team? Just disgusting. It's not my they, team. It's not your team, but it's mine. And my team would beat your team's bottom. We say bottom in this house because our Nearly two-year-old repeats everything we say. So I'm looking at, all I got is a point guard, and I think we know where this is going. I got Jeremiah Martin, one, or two. Lester Quinones, three. Precious Achua, four. Jalen Duran, five. So we will move into, to be politically correct for TJ, last year's team, 22-23. You have a fifth-year Elijah McCadden, a redshirt senior, Keontae Kennedy, a fifth-year Alex Lomax, a fifth-year Kendrick Davis, a senior Chandler Lawson, a redshirt senior KO, a senior Jamar Young, a redshirt freshman Jonathan Lawson, a fifth-year DeAndre Williams, a freshman in Granger, a senior Malcolm Dandridge, a redshirt senior Jaden Hardaway, and a fifth-year Demaria Franklin. So TJ's gonna load up from this roster. Yeah, I am uh I'm gonna take KD and at the one, if I need to specify that. And I'm taking DeAndre at the four. Okay. So your final team was what? KD one, Jeremiah Martin two, Lester, Lester three, DeAndre, DeAndre four, Jalen five. Jalen five. Okay. I am also taking Kendrick. So I have we have very similar. Yep. The only difference in our two teams is Precious at the four versus your DeAndre at the four. So in the comments, let us know which Tiger team that TJ and I just drafted you guys think wins, or if you would have drafted a different five than the two of us drafted. And but how, how I'm just gonna say this? I've measuring who would win. Yeah, like who who what team gets more wins? Just who would beat who? Seven game series, which team wins? I'm gonna have to say my team because Precious would have DeAndre in foul trouble immediately, and then you're playing four on five the rest of the game. Mm, I don't know. I mean that's about, it's, it's very Jalen at the five. Yeah, we're our teams are all everybody playing each other the same person, except the only difference is Precious and DeAndre. And if I give you a junior Lester over my sophomore Lester, which is probably an advantage to you. 
I don't know. He was. I, I picked skinny Lester. I don't know if that's an advantage or not. Again, I'll just say I think I win by default because DeAndre would have fouled out. Well, but maybe not. Maybe the listeners will side with you. Let's see. I'm gonna put it on Twitter. Do that. We'll do a Twitter poll. Um. All right. Anything else, basketball? Um. No, that should be it. Actually, this time around. All right, let's jump into football. We've had some, at least for TJ, devastating transfer portal news. Uh, Not only did Arrington McRae enter the portal, who TJ was a big fan of, also another huge TJ from Twitter fan, or uh, he was a big fan of Davion Mayo also entered, linebacker who entered with fellow, I guess he was a hybrid DB linebacker going in or out of the spring. Andrew Smoke Jones hits the portal as well. Three a day, man. I mean, not massive losses by any means, but three guys you felt like could have been contributors. You still feel, I feel still a little bit uneasy at the tight end position. So it's like you wanted to see maybe Arrington kind of step up as one of those pass catching options from the tight end spot. And then, I mean, we had kind of talked about Davion potentially being a, you know, top four guy that's rotating in, maybe getting some starts as a linebacker. He'd played what 30 ish games, I think, uh, for the Tigers. So just depth at that spot you're losing, I guess, with him and uh, Smoke Jones hitting. But, I don't TJ, do you think that that's the, the staff just is confident in what they've got at the linebacker spot, if that's kind of an indication of anything? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's exactly what it is, right? I mean, you have – I think the writing is on the wall for Jeff Kent and Arku to be the starting middle linebacker. Um, they brought in Chandler Jones for him to compete immediately. They brought in uh, uh, Chatavis Johnson, CJ Johnson, the linebacker from junior college. Uh, I mean, they they, they hey, brought Chandler in a couple Jones? of guys. I mean, Chandler, Chandler Jones would be would be very good, uh, but no, not him. A I hybrid think. of Chandler Martin and S- Smoke Jones. I see what you did there. No, Chatavis Johnson. Well, C.J. Johnson. Said, yeah, C.J. Johnson. That's his name. Yeah, I think he said Chandler Jones instead of Chandler Martin, though. At first, oh, did we'll I have to check know. the tape? Yeah, uh, check the tape. Whatever. Anyway, um, but yeah, they, they they brought in a lot of guys. You've got one more coming in, uh, Tillman from the junior college ranking. I think they feel really good about what they had there. The only thing that really concerns me, and why I made my comment about losing Davian Mayo, who I am high on. I did like Davian Mayo. He's filled in a lot of games for you, but it's just that Smoke Jones has played ten games, thirteen games. I don't remember exactly the number. You I think it was thirty close games. To yeah. Yeah, and you got 30 games from Davy and Mayo. Look at your linebackers right now. How many have played Division One football outside of uh, Jeff Kent, Narku, Chandler Martin? Or played real reps, right? I mean, you got some guys not that even that. Yeah. Not even no, that. No, I, I, mean, I see where Name someone at. on the roster that's played games. Spencer Rich has not played anything. Edmondson is a special teams guy. Like, it's very thin at linebacker. Uh, especially now that you've lost two guys that have had yeah. some pretty serious reps for you. As as far as D1 experience. But I do think it is maybe an indication of, hey, we've kind of identified our guys in sure. that room um, and who's going to get a majority of the reps. So it was just maybe writing on the wall for uh, Smoke Jones and, um, and Davion Mayo. Uh, but you had indicated in the Discord, again, if you guys hadn't signed up, sign up TJ and Trey for uh, 10% off. Uh, you'll get access to the Discord, chat it up with us, with uh, GB, GBB squad, with uh, Christian, Gabe, Kenny, the whole gang. Uh, when Arrington hit, there were rumblings that we were going to, wouldn't, it wouldn't be long, but that void at the tight end room would be there. And uh, sure enough, today, 
got a commitment on uh, on the old social media from Austin Smith. Uh, one of the feels like 100 Colorado players that have hit the portal. Uh, I think what they've had 31 since the portal reopened on April 15th. Um, big bodied tight end, 6'5, 230, I think is what he's at. He was a former three star, was actually in the same class. We were looking at this before we started. Same class as Eric Um McCray. I think McCray is a little higher rated than uh, Smith, but Smith's a bigger body. Hasn't honestly, hadn't played a ton. You you know, go back to talk about the linebackers. You talk about Austin Smith. I mean, he's played in three games in his career at Colorado. He spent the last two years at Colorado. Uh, played in three games last year. Two of their first games, TCU and uh, Minnesota, where he had – he's got one catch for four yards and a touchdown in his career. So my guy is 100% on uh, receiving tutties. Um, and that was the only touchdown that Colorado scored uh, against Minnesota that game. So – Shout out to Austin for scoring the only points for uh, the Buffalo. But not a ton of of play. He played again later in, a, I mean, a massive blowout. They lost to Washington like 56-7 to seven or something, and he got some time at the end of the year. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what he brings to that room. Obviously, a lot of size, potentially maybe more of a, a receiving tight end. If you're looking for one, if that's somebody that's going to be replacing – kind of what you thought Harrington may be at, at 6'3", 225 or whatever Harrington was. Um, but gives you a big target, I mean, if you're Seth and, and looking for that tight end, kind of like you had in uh, Priest Corn last year. Yeah. I, you know, we actually led you astray when we were talking about it earlier, the the uh, rain, the uh, the rankings from 247. We originally looked at the composite. If you don't look at the composite and look at the 247, Arrington is just a little bit higher than uh, Austin is. It was 84 versus 88, so whatever. In terms of what you're getting, if you look at the class of 2020, the year before, uh, number 82 in the nation, any guesses who the number 82 tight end of the nation the year before is? I mean, I might have to have a hint. I don't. No, the 2020 Just, recruiting class. Well, it doesn't matter. It's Anthony Lanfear. So it's a little bit more of what well, you how? already have on their roster. So we, we have our niche. That's our spot, how, right? How about that? Mid 80s is where we're uh, where we're going for. Yeah. So okay. I mean, I, I think so actually, you if you go on it. if you go by two four seven, then uh, Smith was actually four spots higher at tight end than than uh, Ole Arrington was. So yeah, we yeah. we were looking at the wrong ratings. So maybe equivalent. I think you but a touched bit, on it bigger. already. It, yeah. It's the size. It's definitely the size. I think it's the blocking. They want guys who can uh, definitely provide a receiving threat, but also, I mean, because that's Arrington, right? He is a glorified big body wide receiver. He is not a sure. guy who can really just drop his hand down in the dirt and, and body a big D lineman off the ground. He just wasn't big enough for that. Um. Any role that you would have paved out for him, you kind of have that in in Chislam, I think, already as kind of like that H back kind of guy. Um, so now it's you need to bring in looked, big athletic bodies. I'm kind of excited about Chislam. I am too. I think he was like I, when he I like originally him at that came, H back. <laughs> yeah, when he originally came over, I was like, this dude is just kind of a junior college like fill in. He I didn't think much like about a, him. He just looks like a football dude. He does look like a football dude. He's yeah, just he, a thick dude. He's been catching the ball. Yeah, he had that one pass behind his back. It was like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm excited to see what he's he's bringing. Um, no, but uh, Austin used. Well, there was video. I don't know if he used it. I mean, it was in his tweet, but it was. They used a lot of clips from the SMU game day game, and man, it brought back so many. I just changed my background to it. Is that like? Is that I mean the pinnacle of our Tiger football fandom was that year that those two moments that year in of itself, but the two moments of game day SMU and then the Cotton Bowl, like making the Cotton Bowl. Is that does it is it going to get any better than that, TJ? Should we have retired? It's realistically possible after that season. 
Yeah, I don't know if it's physically possible to break. I mean, I get I get goosebumps to this day watching the highlights of that game. Are you get freaking Antonio Gibson was scoring from every yeah, possible all place. Wide receiver, running back, kick returner. I mean, it was gosh, I wish I could go back in time and just be in that game again. It was so great. Yeah. I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it again. Whew. Hopefully we get let's get let's Let's get that feeling back this year. I don't think you have a game day game on the schedule, but mm-hmm. let's get to the New York New Year Six again. Yeah, and win it. <sighs> All right. Um, outside of that, not a ton of uh, not a ton of football stuff going on. Obviously, I had the draft last Thursday through the weekend. Unfortunately, didn't hit the decade mark for a streak of Tigers being taken every year in the draft, at least one. Did not have a draftee. You thought maybe Quindell had a shot, didn't end up getting drafted. Um, But you did have three guys sign as uh, undrafted free agents. Joe Doyle signed with the Texans. Tyler Murray signing with the Bengals. And then our boy Quindell signing with uh, the Rams. Then you had a couple get invited, I think, to rookie minicamps. All by the New York Giants invited several Tigers. I think Savante Oliver, Austin Myers, and Zay got invited to the uh, Giants rookie minicamp. So we'll be interesting to see if if any of those guys can find landing spots and uh, make a cut. Yeah, I mean it's it's mini camp like it, it's so tough to make those uh the rookie camps like that it's you're a handful of guys invited uh just getting to go i, th- I think is a special th- kind of special moment in the first place right uh, absolutely an, an under or an undrafted free agent is kind of like a even even that is a dream really especially for a guy like joe doyle i mean a great punter uh not many teams are out there looking to spend draft capital on a specialist like that so i mean there's a a really high chance he could actually land on a roster somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, excited to see what happens throughout the summer and and going into the NFL season and see if any of those guys can can find a home. So, um, TJ, I think that wraps it up as far as basketball and, and football. Hopefully, we uh, like I said, we got ten more days in the portal. You know, the the football portal still active. Like, like we said, we got Austin Smith today. Maybe could. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe they fill one of those voids at linebacker. Maybe they're really truly solidified in that room already. But uh, feeling pretty good about where we're at football wise. Uh, but obviously, like we said, want to see. I would say at least two more commitments on the basketball side of things, and try to get a a roster rounded out as we get into the the summer season here. So, I. Uh... This is just a fun fact, real quickly. I was I was reading about Austin Smith, the tight end track guy. You wouldn't think so at that size. Oh, I did. I did mean to bring that up because I know you're you're you got your track and field numbers. He ran yeah. a what was it an eleven three eight in the one hundred meter? What is that? That's good for a guy that size, uh, right? You're talking see. six five two thirty. Yeah, this one says eleven point oh one, which. Anything under eleven five, I feel like at six five two thirty, that's that's a big man moving, right? It's not like elite speed, but you're talking about Calvin Austin at but you gotta put yeah five gotta, nine one sixty versus a dude who is six yeah. five two thirty. I mean size, size yeah, there's gonna be a be two a second difference it. there. Oh yeah, for sure. So hey, maybe uh maybe old Austin's got some wheels on him too. Wouldn't be bad to see a big man seam route down the middle from Austin. Uh, don't don't hate it at any mean by any means getting a track guy on the football field, especially at his size, like you said. Yeah. Um, all right, let's get into this uh, Irusu. I've enjoyed this beer, Teach. It's good, dude. I feel I, like I feel better drinking it at ninety nine calories too. It just feels healthier. You know what I mean. Got a freaking one gram of protein, so like getting gains at the same time. Oh, this was good. I enjoyed this rice what lager. Do you think, what do you think Erusu means? That I have no idea. 
I want to say up, it's actually. based on the can. I wouldn't be surprised if there was like an Arusu River or something. You see how this is like a river community. It's like a river town. A river's running through the middle, and there's all the houses on the river banks. Um, what the hell? Um, it, it doesn't really have an English equivalent. Um, means pretending that nobody's at home. It, it tells me it doesn't have a translation and provides a translation. Have you ever done that before, pretending that nobody was at home? Yeah, all the time. Anytime anyone knocks on my door, I'm like, aha, dude. Nobody's home, yeah. That's why we got a new front door, so people couldn't tell if we were home or not. I'm not trying to talk. I do people. like this can, though. I like the color of it. Typically, I'm not a huge, like, off-white guy but yeah. i think this with the font and then you got like the reddish sun in the background i'm like i'm like the I like the color scheme going on here <laughs> this is gonna be kind of morbid right i just need you to hear me out here i like what you're talking about that 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 bone color like that off-white looking color mm. bone why do you have to call it bone have you ever seen bone it's, in real life it's yeah, very it's white. like a bone Oh, that is very, very. You're talking like a skeleton, bro. No, I have seen not. a compound fracture, and it the bone was the whitest thing I've ever seen. You need to look up bone, the color. Like, not were you not there when we were playing flag football on freaking uh, what's the field by El Maron? The ROTC field, yeah. And Taylor Thank snapped you. his leg in half, and his bone was sticking out. You didn't see that, yeah. I think you need to go look at what the color bone looks like. I'm not going to go look. I know what you're I'm about. To, this is about to be so many Twitter polls. Just try an idiot. Oh. I'm just saying, anyway. when I saw that bone live in action as it broke through the skin, it was very white. All right. Well, this looks very similar. It may be a little more red than the color bone, but relatively similar without comparing them side by side. It's like that, those heinous Tennessee basketball uniforms that they've been wearing that just look like they've they haven't cream, been clean like, like a reddish cream like they've just been sweating in them and then not washing them so they dry like a little bit of yellowy you know what I mean alright let me get back to where I was going with that I get Arusu vibe like the Arusu vibes I get like uh <laughs> I get Japanese vibes here, basically mostly because it, there's words. Yeah, it's a rice it. lager. Rice lager. And then I get this giant wave here, and it instantly takes me to like that tsunami oh, that killed I did everybody not even, in Japan. So yeah, now yes. I'm like so low on the rating. I didn't, I'm going to be honest with you. I just assume I did not look closely at that, and I just thought it was a mountain like the other one. No. I, I liked it until I was like, damn, that's a dang, that's a tsunami. Oh my gosh, Tej. Why'd you have to point that out? I don't even remember what year that was, but I remember Japan got mashed with a tsunami. I mean, this is definitely, yeah, rice lager. This is like, uh, now I can't think of the name of the beer. I don't know, but <sighs> I mean, they got some uh, explaining to do, oh, Isaac. I don't know. And get I'm going. I'm gonna go seven three on this can. Wow, big kind of natural uh, natural disaster deaths. Wow. Um, take I was gonna go higher, the... but after you pointed that out, I took it down some. Okay. Taking the tsunami portion out of it, I do think it's kind of chill. Like that little sun disappearing in the back. It's like the only really pop of color you got. I would love to visit that river. You could probably reverse Google search it and find out where this is. I'm sure if it's a real place. Um, would you say the can was seven one? Seven three. Seven three. I'm again without taking the tsunami into account. I'm gonna say like a six five. It, it's kind of plain, but then it kind of gets it. saved by the color of the sun for me. Yeah. It's a little middle of the road, though. Yeah, I get you. 
right. What All about right. the beer? Um, I enjoyed this, and I would definitely could drink more than one of these. I mean, I could, I you could probably kill a six pack of these fairly. Yeah, I guess. I feel like I could drink a ton of these, <laughs> especially at. I mean, that's under six hundred calories. Six of them. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Um. I mean, this is one I would. This is a tailgate beer. I could take this, just hanging out. Uh, that's gonna be up there, like seven nine. I don't want to okay. throw it in the eights with like some of the really really good ones, but I mean, this is a good quality lighter beer. Well, you said you wouldn't throw in the eights, and I would. I would say this is an eight three. I could drink a million of these. Maybe not in one sitting because I would maybe die. That's how I should. Maybe I should look at it that. How can, uh, how many no. of them can you drink? You know, probably and a lot. I, but yeah, I could definitely drink a lot. I have no no qualms. I could drink a lot of bump those. Me, I'm bump, go. Uh, I'm going eight flat. Bump me up. Eight flat. Oh wow, yeah. Ricky number. Wow, eight flat. Okay, this is good. It is. It's very good. You convinced me. I could drink multiples. That's a good score. We got a total of seven five on that between can and beer. That is that's, oh, man, that's like there. a whole thing. Jeez, there's like a whole paragraph on their website. Oh, I can't read all that. It's good. Just know that. Go get one. That's good. Hit up uh, Wiseacre. Uh, get yourself in a Rousseau. Rousseau. All right, Teej. I'm about to be headed to the beach. I don't know if we'll it may be Kenny filling in. I may still record. You'll have to tune in next week to find out. Maybe my background will be an ocean setting. Who knows? Or maybe I'll be 60 Rusus deep on the beach and not <laughs> record. You have to come back to find out. Come with the cold beer, stay for the hot takes. Peace. Thank you for listening to On the Bluff. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a rating and a review wherever you download your podcasts. Also, like and subscribe to Bluff City Media's YouTube page. Head over to www.bluffcitymedia.co for comprehensive coverage of Memphis sports and how you can become an insider.